Well, good morning campers. Here we are in Florida on Alligator Alley early in the morning and we get a call from Sister Robin who needs help building a spider web and she has put her faithful husband Yubi or Uncle Bob up to building a spider web. We've done it before up there a few years and taught him how but we're getting old and we forget so here is instructions on how to build a spider web just for you you be uncle bob okay the first thing we have to do is refresh your memory on tying knots one of my favorite knots in the whole world is the clove hitch clove hitch is just simply a knot that is tied and I call it the back row of the drive-in knot because you come through put your arm or you sit your girlfriend down and put your arm around her over her shoulder and then slide your hand around her back so what this ends up as is sort of a figure eight. Very easy to tie and it holds on to round things but still can slide. Let me tie one for you. Alright. You put your hand or I'm sorry, you sit your girl down and you put your hand around her shoulders. Then you cross over and slide your hand, let's call it under her arm. <laughs> Just for, so we're not x-rated. And there's your clove hitch. Now, you also find this, if you just did that knot, all right? Now this straight piece is your line. If you did that knot, as a two half hitches that's all it is so on your line you'd come around for one hitch and around for the second one and loop it through itself and you would have two half hitches and it also when you tighten it it will hold round things and it slides on a round object or even a square object to tighten this knot, you'd pull it and then pull to the left and then the right. Assuming that this line here, the main line, is tight. So to set that knot, you'd pull it to the left and then the right. Now, it's also a good friction knot because it still can be slid but not very easily. It'll, it'll stay well, pretty much where you put it if you tighten it too tight. I've tightened this one too tight. A little less tension. There you go. It's moving now. It'll still move on that. This is the line. This is the tie line. It'll still move on that line either way and stay where you put it. This is a clove hitch again. You can still see it simple knot but oh my goodness it's good for anything I mean anything and everything that has to do with holding to round objects and tying it quickly okay so we have a clove hitch or a back seat of the drive-in knot let me tell you the story of the spider web tying about 10 years ago, I'm in Bangor, Maine, above Bangor, Maine, and watched two little girls about waist high tie this beautiful spider web on the side of their house. They spent all afternoon, I just parked across the street and watched them. It was gorgeous, in a white, bright white yarn. When it became dark, I went across the street to congratulate them, and the older girl, which is about maybe 10 or 11, I said, this is just something beautiful and she said no this sucks um, I hate doing this only because we've done it for three years and it's still not figured out the knot 
that you have to tie to make this thing look pretty because I'm a Girl Scout but all the knots that we've learned don't work on this spider web because once you start tying and you get along the way it either gets tighter or looser till it's all baggy or so tight that it breaks and there just is not a good knot well I kept my mouth shut and told him it was beautiful and went on so the first thing I did is buy a thing of yarn and about 20 miles down the road stopped in a park and started tying spider webs well after about three years two and a half three years of being frustrated because they were right there is no knot out there that I know of that solves the problem well finally one day because the clove hitch which were right here is one of my very favorite knots I figured out that a perfect spider web tying knot is just an unfinished clove hitch now I call this the girlfriend on the park bench and if you're a girl tying it you can uh, be the boyfriend on the park bench so what you do very simple knot think of that clove hitch unfinished we're gonna sit your girlfriend down on the park bench and just simply put your arm around her that's the knot right there once it's tied all right this is the line that you're tying it to so it's tight I'm at a park bench so I don't really have anything to hold it tight but once it's tight and it's pulled tight this knot can be moved either direction and it holds tension on the next knot both behind it and in front so all you do once you tie it here to this one go to here you'll set that distance before you move on to the next knot okay that's the webmaster knot now it moves left or right but it also will move you can roll that knot and it'll move along the shaft you see it it'll change shafts and move along it and once you tension it it'll stay where you put it that's the perfect spider web tying knot the girlfriend on the park bench knot or the webmaster knot I invented that knot I should patent it I guess but man does it work because once you tie your spider web it all stays tight because each connection supports the last connection and I've tied spider webs with over five miles of this yarn and when you stand at one end of the spider web and start tapping the web you can look at the other end of the web and see it flickering the same as you're tapping just like a spider does so let's go to tying a spider web now I'll tell you right up front I've tried several different yarns and have had very little luck with them either being of good quality or they don't have any stretch ability which means when you're trying to really put the pressure on and you finish your web and you want to move it a little bit or raise it or lower it or widen it most yarns will break in one place or another so I use only red heart yarn from Walmart and the other thing is there's a Walmart every five feet out here in the world so they're easy to find bright white do not get off white it doesn't work so we're gonna get bright white yarn so what we have here is a house we're gonna tie a web first thing we're gonna tie is the bullseye so what we do is we'll identify our corners of the web so we're gonna tie that white yarn from there to the tree doesn't matter if you wrap the tree with the yarn or with fish line then we're going down the tree and wrap the tree over to the house now these have to be as tight as you can get them without breaking them and then back up here so what we've done is outlined our web now we're going to set the bullseye so we tie here 
oh I'm sorry these are clove hitches remember the um, girl in the back seat of the drive-in knot tie a clove hitch here split this dimension in half tie a clove hitch here split that in half tie a clove hitch here split that in half tie a clove hitch here split that dimension in half now all of a sudden you've got the perfect bullseye now if it's a real large web you're gonna find out that these spaces in here are just too darn big so you'll tie one here and split that difference tie one here split that difference okay so if you need to you tie one here and split that distance there same here how fancy you want to make it but you'll find out after tying decades of miles of this yarn you're not so fancy building it so tiny because they get the idea now we're gonna pick a space that's wide all right and I like to take and go clockwise so I'll tie a clove hitch here and then tie a webmaster here the webmaster here and it's just like a spider the spider would sit in the and would fasten in the middle and then walk around this web starting here walk around this web and put his little butt and fasten a web the length of one arm so that's what you're making a spider web now these don't have to be perfect right off the bat When you get here, you sort of go in a straight line. Oops. See what I mean? And you'll go all the way around, each one tying a webmaster or park bench knot. You'll find in short order, once you get this tied, and you haven't finished it yet, look here you're coming up to the end of the web so you're going to tie here and here this gets a clove hitch clove hitch Okay, so once you start here, to finish this off, clove hitch. Low pitch. You see what I mean? So then you tie another one here. Finish this web off. That's called the bullseye. Okay. You tie again here. Now, once you get this all tied, and these, of course, are webmaster knots, sometimes it works out you hit another web, another point. Sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't matter. They get the idea. This looks like a spider web. So once you get this all set, say that this string here is loose, you'd move that away from the center. 
and that'll that will tighten those two strings and you stand back and look at it and you'll see that it's all kind of odd oddbally or not perfect you can just take two fingers put them on each side of the knot and move it left or right up or down and it'll stay where you put it to make that web perfect the hoop patent pendant webmaster tying system all right I showed you a bullseye now let's show you a spray so if we take the well let's say the side of a house okay and a bush okay we got a little bush here all right we're gonna tie a line across the bottom of the bush and we're gonna tie a very tight line to the house and from there down because what we're doing is outlining our web you have to outline it okay now everything oops I goofed up there you go we're back everything goes from this apex so this line that comes down has to be very very tight and if there's a way to fasten it to the house in a couple of spots do it because this will end up with a big bow in it from the tension so we're going to take the center of this web this is a clove hitch and we're going to tie a line to there then we're going to take the center again tie a line to there take the center of the this space we're splitting everything in half every time now that looks plenty big enough now don't get caught up in trying to tie a little tiny web between these here because you'll find out that it's tough and it also you have to keep the tension of this whole thing correct the whole time what you do is start out here where the spaces are bigger you can tie a little one there if you want but go to here here and these are all web knots I'm sorry this is a clove hitch here and this is a web not here and here Oops, I lost my paper. The wind started blowing. Okay, clove hitch. Web knot, web knot, web knot. Clove hitch. These don't have to be little tiny spaces. These can be 10 to 12 inches apart. Clove hitch. Web knot, web knot, web knot. Clove hitch. Okay, and you can see it uh, ends up looking like this. If it doesn't exactly come out at the end, that's fine. Just fill in the space. Okay. This is a spray. Now, let's say that this little bush comes up and has a limb on it. And you want to tie another spider web in here so you just simply take this knot tie a clove hitch here and just keep coming down okay then you follow these out now this is a problem with this uh, whole system is it becomes addictive you end up tying every daggum thing in the world to itself or to another web now if this bush if you get excited I didn't get enough paper in the bush you want to take it this way the ground goes this way and you want to tie it here you can add to it and just keep going around and 
it just it never ends you can tie one web to the other this goes on to another place if um, you have let's say that that house goes back like this and you want to tie this is the roof of the house here you want to tie here and to the top of this tree and this is more like a right angle here because here's your house here okay so this is more of a right angle whatever you want to do if you want to tie a bullseye in here do the same thing start splitting the differences now here's another dirty trick if we if we tie this like this and this is an oddball shape see how it comes thin here and it's thick here we tie the center together one of the keys the dirty tricks is this center is movable before you tie it so you can move it anywhere on this space that you want within reason so if it's thinner on this end you would move this this way maybe six inches to a foot so that it evens out the pie shapes but if it does not there's nothing stopping you from tying a clove hitch here. Oh, and you've run this line to outline your web, of course. Tie a clove hitch here, come here, tie a park bench knot here, and go right back out to here to take up that big space. See what I mean? So you could tie from here, clove hitch, web knot, and out to here see they start connecting until finally the whole daggum world is webbed it's just it's addictive as hell and you just fill in the corners and there you go you have got the hoop patent pending yeah webmaster not if there's any questions uh, good luck okay you've completed uh, web tying 101 let's go to the really sneaky part because I had heart failure and had a serious problem I was an iron worker for years but the doctor said I could no longer let my feet leave the ground so that pretty much ended my climbing ladders, building scaffolds to build spider webs. And all of a sudden I said, hey, stupid, why do you need to leave the ground? So here is web tying 202. So let's say we have the house, okay? And we want to put a spider web from the house to a tree. But the tree that you want to put it to you want to put it up here. The house, you want to put it right here. So what you would do is, here's the grass, you would measure as close as you can the distance. Uh, let's go back a little bit. No, we don't have to. Okay, you would measure the distance from here to here and get as close as you can the dimension of that string. And you can do it by just stepping next to the house and pacing off the distance to the tree. Okay, then pace off the distance of the string. All right. Then you will calculate by pacing off the distance to a bush that's right here or a nail in the ground or something. This is going to be your apex, all right? Then you would calculate this distance here. So you've got a triangle, say. And you want to put a bullseye on that from the ground up 40 foot or 60 foot. I've had them up 70 foot to a house that's 40 foot tall. You calculated these three distances and you've laid this out. Now, how do I do this? All right. So we have house, tree, bush. 
so we will lay this triangle out of those three dimensions. You remember the three dimensions? Then we will split the difference, right? Um, we're going to split the different distant, the center, and the center. Now you notice this is a little bit odd, oblong by the time you get these three split. So we're going to move this center over to about here to make this look better. All right. So imagine that it's there. So this is a big space. We'll tie a clove hitch here, come to the center, and split that space right there. Uh, just for fun, we'll tie a clove hitch here, come to the center, and split that space right there. Webmaster knot, clove hitch, clove hitch. Okay, now, and you might tie one here just for looks. If you, depends on how fancy. You can get a lot of time tied up in these by making more strings. Okay, so we're going to pick a narrow one to a big one. All right, and you tie this knot a little bit inbound, so it has to go up. All right, and the reason it goes up is so this next one doesn't look so bad when it comes around. So we tied our web, we filled in all the spaces. Okay, you with me? All right, so we've tied our web on the ground, staked it down here, here, and here to those three dimensions that I told you about, the top of the house, top of the tree, and the bush in the yard. This is where it gets a little complicated. You will take a fishing pole with 10 pound test, and you will cast up in that tree a piece of fishing line, 10 pounds, Put a piece of at least 50 pound on it, drag it up over so that you can control, I'm sorry, there's a crotch in this tree, so that you can control the string from the ground. You'll put the string down to the triangle you tied on the ground. All right, throw the fishing line over the house, 50 pound test that goes all the way over the house and you're going to tie it either to a small child or a neighbor over here. Usually a railing or something is better than somebody moving. All right. And tie it to this part of the uh, web, which is laying on the ground at this point. This is getting to be a mess. And it's going to take uh, probably four or five people to raise this. So you'll pick this web up. Here we go back to here. Now you've got a fishing line over the house here, around the tree, and you've got somebody standing here ready to tie it to that bush. So you will pick that web up and walk it this way until these two points are getting close to the house because you've tied this fishing line to here and to here with clove hitches or two half hitches. And you're going to walk this thing this way until you get these two, keep them as tight as you can, close to where you're going to raise them. Okay? Then start raising them, and as you do, have this smart person here keeping the tension as much as he can on it, and you'll raise those right up. A face. You'll raise those up from the ground until they reach those two points. And if you measured right, that line will be tight. Then pull this line as your only adjustment back into the bush. And you can lengthen or shorten these lines here only from that point. These this this line's got to be an exact dimension because this hopefully is tight. Once you start pulling that, you'll see it'll tighten the rest of the web up. If you want this to be up in the air also, so that whole thing is a canopy above your property. I did that down here in Florida to Allen's place, the palm trees. I raised the whole canopy five miles of yarn up 65 foot. Just by raising this third one up into a tree or something. When you throw the line, 
your line's got to be exactly in line with that point right there to make a stretch, an even stretch. So if you tie it to another house or a tree, you can raise that whole thing up till it's the whole thing's a canopy above your property. I hope this helps you a bunch. Uh, this is certainly webbing 101 and 102. Okay, spider web tying 103. I have over the years found out that these webs are very, very versatile in the fact that you've learned to tie a splash and you've learned to tie a bullseye. I, in a comedy club, tied a bullseye, a double bullseye, so they're two different planes. So let me see if I can explain this. I tied a bullseye, all right, across the top of a comedy club. So this, we're looking flat at the bullseye. Here's the center point of that bullseye, right? But it's flat and you can tie another spider web right through it with the bullseye running this way so the two of them actually are across in midair and you can also tie splashes through another web now where this comes into play is if you have several different controllable black lights at night and you can change from one black light to another, you can totally change the look of the spider webs. Because I've also tied, here's a house, here's a tree, and I tied a spider web at this level, covering the tree, bushes, uh, bushes, another tree, so I have a whole plane of spider web, which is about 10 foot off the ground. Then I tied another spider web right over the top of it. I tied this one first, actually, don't let me lie to you. But a whole different pattern. So when I turn the black lights on from up here, this pattern showed. When I turned the black lights on from here, going up, this pattern showed and that one was a ghost. And I could change from one to the next. And as you're walking under this thing, somebody's walking under it and you change the spotlights on it, the black lights, this thing starts changing on you and it will literally make them drunk or sick enough, motion sick enough to sit right down or throw up. It's a lot of fun. Bring paper towels. But the rest is left to your imagination. I just started watching two little girls. The rest of it just, all the evil popped out in me after I started tying it. And uh, your imagination is all that's holding you back. Good luck, 